ghost stories, creepy hotels, and hauntings are all over the internet. Hotel Zaza in Texas is another hotel that hit the mainstream and internet after some very weird occurrences for guests happened and were booked into a very weird room on accident, then removed from the room. Before we get into the story, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. A Redditor by the name Joe Likes Music posted to r slash Houston about a business trip to Houston him and some colleagues made. The group of colleagues checked into an upscale hotel called Zaza, and everyone was assigned to a normal room except for one of his colleagues, who found himself in a creepy room that was much smaller than the rest and felt like a dungeon, otherwise known as room 322. It was one third the size of the other rooms with brick walls, a cement floor, chains attached to the bed and holding it up against the wall, pictures of distorted figures and paintings of skulls on the wall, a large mirror right next to the bed, and most interesting of all, of the art slash decor if you want to call it that, a small portrait of a smiling old man in a suit above the doorway looking over the room. Now as you can see, this is a normal man, it's a, it's a picture, not a painting like the rest. When the colleague notified the front desk, they said there was a mistake and that room was not supposed to be rented, and they moved him into another room. However, he managed to get a bunch of pictures of the room before he was moved, which are most of the pictures that I've shown you of the room. Another person had a similar situation. Hilary Davidson, a writer, spoke with PopCultureNerd.com about her experience at Zaza. When I checked into Houston's Hotel Zaza at midnight on Thursday night, there was some confusion. My room was a themed room known as the Hard Times Room. A few minutes after I got there, the front desk called up and said they had to move me. The people at the front desk were deeply upset at the thought of me being stuck in that room. I told them I was a crime writer, but they insisted on moving me to a more swanky room. The story gets even weirder. Joe was asked by an anonymous user to delete the thread about the room. He was offered $1,000 to remove the thread from the public. The request was posted as stated. In exchange for a sum of $1,000 wired to an account of your choice, please delete your submission slash respond no further inquiries regarding the hotel matter. Payment shall be made in 15 days if the request is honored. Thank you. Joe obviously declined the offer as the thread still exists to this day. Joe also got in touch with the Houston Chronicle, who reached out to the hotel and got a statement from a spokesperson saying it's a theme room called Hard Times for guests who want a playful spin on a jail experience. But having just seen the images, does this look like a jail cell? Now, Hotel Zaza does have a list of theme rooms for rent on its website. However, currently the Hard Times themed room isn't listed and was not listed at the time of the article by the Houston Chronicle. According to another Redditor, within days of the original story breaking, the hidden room suddenly appeared on their website as a room that could be rented. However, once the publicity around this whole event and room disappeared, it was gone from the website yet again. Was this an attempt to make it seem like there was nothing weird about this room, or were they just trying to cash in on the publicity? I personally think they were doing a bit of both, as their original explanation of it being part of the theme rooms, not having it up on their website, how does that make any kind of sense? If this room was part of your themed rooms, why wouldn't you have it up on your website at the time of this person's reddit post and then only post it online for a short amount of time? A room sitting empty is wasted money. So why would you waste a whole room and then start moving people out once they are actually booked into that room? Doesn't make much sense. As you could see, the paintings and decor was weird and creepy, but one thing that really stood out 
The portrait of the old man in the suit. This was later determined to be Jay Camo, a former executive with Stanford Financial Group, a Houston company which was shut down by the feds in 2009 for running a 7 billion Ponzi scheme. This begs the question, why use a picture of Jay Camo as decor in your hotel? Now, some speculation has been made that there are ties between Camo and Benji Holmesy, the hotel president. Apparently, they were in the same fraternity at different points, which has ties to the infamous Yale Skull and Bone Society. There's been lots of speculation about the room and its purposes, including that the mirror is a two-way mirror that the room is tied to the Skull and Bone Society being that 322 is an important number for the society as it is actually part of their logo, or that it even was a secret meeting room for the Illuminati. So what was the deal with this room? The hotel's explanations seem off, and considering they move people out after quote unquote accidentally putting them in the room, it's just weird. Is it a publicity stunt or was this an off the books room that only certain people know about so they won't show up in the actual hotel registry? Many like to lean on the hotel's explanation. However, with the information coming out about the ties between Benji and Kumo, seems very weird. Also, booking people in the room then removing them, was it to create buzz or do employees actually make the mistake? Who knows? We may never actually know why room 322 exists at Hotel Zaza, or why an image of Jake Mo looks over the room. Seems like a publicity stunt or maybe something else, if I'm being honest. But who knows, maybe there truly is nothing more to this room. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, be sure to like, share, and comment. Also, if you have any other stories you'd like covered here on the channel, please let me know in the comments or in the Discord, which is in the links below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Remy.